Hey guys and gals, welcome to the channel. My name is Jesse Kublikan Hoff. This video is about uh, my 2001 Honda Insight. I replaced the battery. Well, I reconditioned the battery cells in this car. Uh, this is a shot I took in Moab, uh, Utah. Uh, this car, a little background about it, I picked that car up in, um, off um, he claimed Amy Lovins, his, his old car, and uh, the batteries were, were not working. Uh, the IMA light was on, and uh, I took it off his hands for 300 bucks. And um, yeah, uh, it's been a great car. After I reconditioned the batteries, IMA light went off, and I've been driving that car ever since. I probably put like probably 30, 40,000 miles on it so far. Um, after the recondition, I did have to get a, um, a grid charger, so um, I will add that caveat. But it's been a great car. I also had a 2007 Honda Insight. That was a, a red one that I had, and um, that's why Amory contacted me about this car. He knew I had a red one, and I wanted this blue one, which gets a little bit better gas mileage, I find, with the stick shift. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the, the fix of it. Uh, I lost some of the video, unfortunately, from this uh, fix, so I'm just going to be showing you some stills, and I got some video also, but. Um, the beginning part, I gotta show you some stills. So, let's see, get this pick. So, once you get um, the carpet off, uh, the back trunk, you know, there's the spare tire, you get in there, make sure you flip that switch it's to off, and then you start to disassemble. You know, lots of screws, lots of bolts. Um, all the screws are very similar though, so easy to keep track of and then this metal plate just kind of pops off and uh, we'll get into the video now yeah, I just want to show you guys the technique I'm using to get these tabs out so I'm getting my finger underneath there releasing it with my finger and using a screwdriver to pry it out it's kind of hard to do with just your fingers so releasing all the tabs with my finger and then using the screwdriver on top that seems to be the best technique to get all those out. I just want to show you guys something. Keep in mind this is a 2001 Honda Insight. Um, the other guy's video, he's got a green Honda Insight. I'm not sure what year that was. But I'm able to access both bolts in the back. One right there and one down there. I'm probably going to be able to access those without having to um, take this apart very much. that thing right there which I didn't have to do. So keep that in mind. I'll just get these bolts and that's the last two bolts holding this battery in. Yeah it is a bit of a tight squeeze down to this bolt with an extension so I'm gonna just take this bolt off and then get the extension down there. Yeah like a little bit of play you can kind of get, get at those bolts. And this other one is a 12 millimeter, not a 10. Down here, the ones that are holding the battery at 12. Yeah, so the other guy's video, I saw him do it with two people. You know, I'm gonna try to take this battery out by myself. Let's see how it works. Let's see if there's a handle there. Handle there. There it goes. There it goes a bit better. It's not that heavy. Oh. Nothing like crawling around in an insect. So for this um, this part, you know, I just took off plastic plate, took off all these bolts. That's pretty easy going with uh, the screw gun. But then you have all these little tiny screws you gotta take out also. So what I've been doing is I've been using my screwdriver to break the bolt 
and then I'd go in with my with my gun to uh, unscrew it. I just find that if I use a screw gun, sometimes I'll strip the screw. So I recommend breaking the screw with um, a screwdriver, then using the gun. All right, another thing to keep in mind, I got my fluke and I'm trying to get a full pack voltage from all 20 cells and I'm not able to do it now that I have the battery pack disassembled. So I'm gonna just gonna have to take the voltage of each individual cell and add them all up together. But I think I probably could have got a full pack voltage if I would have just measured the voltage off these two wires um, with the switch still um, open and uh, I mean closed at least. Then I could have got a full pack voltage. Now I can't get it and I'm just gonna have to add up all the voltage of individual cells. So keep that in mind if you want a full pack voltage before you start reconditioning. All right, so after you get that pack apart here, so we're kind of jumping a little bit backwards here. In that previous video, I had taken all these bolts out. So you have to take all these bolts out and the screws I was talking about were these little tiny screws right here. I was breaking with the screwdriver and then using my tool to uh, back those up. There's tons of them, you know. And you gotta take good pictures, remember where this wire runs. Um, but yeah, you know, it's pretty straightforward. This plate comes off with these four screws here. And the reason I was talking about the, the pack voltage so much is because I wanted to make sh see what my pack was at before I charged it. Um, my, my plan was to take it all the individual cells out, there's 20 of them. You know, the, each one of these bolts represents a cell. Took each one of those cells out and I'm gonna show you what I did next. This is a good shot of my battery charging setup. So I got a couple hobby chargers and uh, I'll show you these chargers. And I hooked each one of these cells up to one of these chargers. And then I discharged and then recharged each individual cell by like three or four times. And I created an expel spreadsheet. You know, and I wanted to track how which cells were good, which cells were bad. Because I knew I had some bad cells. And I thought I was going to have to replace some of the cells. They were they looked so bad to me in regards to like they wouldn't take very much um, milliamps, and you know they wouldn't go all the way up to voltage. But, um, you know, after a couple of discharges, the ones that were really bad, I discharged and recharged like probably more than three times, maybe five or six, and then kind of came back to life. So let me show you the um, chargers I was using. Uh, I was using one of these. Uh, it's kind of an older setup, but, um, you know, using nickel metal hydra, tried chemistry, this charger does a whole bunch of different chemistries, but you gotta make sure you got the charger set up for that particular chemistry and set at 7.2 volts and once again I discharged them using this thing and then I recharged them and I would do that many times for each cell so getting the battery pack apart getting it out of the car I felt like it was the easy part this was kind of the hard part uh, hooking everything up I'd use alligator clips you know from the hobby chargers um, onto the positive and negative of the cells and Using this, I was able to bring the uh, pack back so that the IMA light, IMA light turned off. And there's another picture here you know, of the negative. Each one of these tabs, um, that's what that little screw attaches to. So I kind of jerry-rigged a lot of it. You know, I'll use alligator clips on alligator clips to you know, get the proper length. But these cells are pretty long and our extensions were not long enough. so. Uh, here's a good picture of the LiPo balance charger I was using. Like I said, it does lots of different chemistries. It does a discharge and a recharge cycle, and that's what I want. And it kept track. I would keep track. I'd take pictures of every charge cycle, see what it would take, how many milliamp hours it, it put in there, and how many I charged it up to. Um, so, yeah, that was basically what I did over and over again with each 20 of these cells. It's showing you I want to see if there's some other pictures lots of these pictures are just me taking up like as data and see what cells were doing good which cells were doing bad but um yeah it's just a, a bunch of work you know I just kept doing this to the cells and then I let them sit and I, once again I put, put, input this all into a, an excel spreadsheet 
So that was the charging cycle. If you have questions about it, please uh, email me or um, comment on the video. And um, I got a couple other videos and I'll show you now. All right, so we've got the battery pack back in, wired everything back up, flipped the switch. Yeah, the good news is the IMA light is not on, but there's no, what? Just registered its first bar of battery. This was registering. When I first turned it on, it was registering no bars. Now it's registering one bar. I also am able to do this. I can test voltage from these two leads. It's reading 169 right now. A couple of minutes ago, it was only reading 163. So I think that's good news. Uh, I am IMA light is off. I'm gonna take it for a test spin, see what's going on. Now the battery level is full and still no IMA light on. And also I'll mention that in the other video that I watch, um, he said to reset this IMA fuse. I didn't pull that. I just turned the car on and hit the switch and everything seems to be good. So I don't think you really need to do that. Well, cool guys, thanks for watching. Oh, there's my awesome car the, with the LaSalle's in the background. But yeah, one caveat I'll add right now is that after about 10,000 miles or so, the IMA light did come back on. So what I figured I'd do is I'd try the grid charger. And I used some light bulbs and I was able to discharge the pack and recharge the pack with the grid charger without having to take apart the whole pack. And that seems to turn the IMA light off also. So I, I'm not sure if I really needed to do the cells individually, but I, I definitely think it helped. So I, so I've been driving this car for probably 30, 40,000 miles without the IMA light um, having a bit of a problem. It's been a great car so far, and uh, thanks for watching. Always subscribe if you can, comment on the video, like it, and uh, open to questions. So thanks for tuning in. Bye.